metacarpal base fractures, uh, when you're looking at these, you have to determine firstly if they're intra or extra articular. And um, when they are intra articular, they often fall into one of two categories, what we call Bennett fractures and Rolando fractures. And they can be challenging to treat because they're not a fracture that we can typically treat non-operatively. It's a fracture we have to almost always treat operatively um, because of their inherent instability and displacement because of unopposed pole of uh, various tendons, primarily APL tendon. When you're looking at, at the thumb metacarpal anteriorly, or the volar side of it, it kind of looks like this. So this is your thumb metacarpal right? Your index metacarpal sits a little bit higher too and obviously uh, ulnar to it. So index finger metacarpal, right? So when you're dealing with, with these fractures, if it's, if it's extra articular, which is a common fracture, we call them epibasal or just extra articular, the fractures that are problematic are the Bennett fractures, which is like this, or the Rolando fractures, which is both things. So Bennett fracture, what's the problem with is there's a ligament, the beak ligament or the anterior oblique ligament that keeps that fragment with the index metacarpal. So you can imagine then what happens is the thumb metacarpal displaces proximally. And the reason for it is that the insertion of the APL tendon has unopposed pull and displaces, displaces uh, that, uh, the, the entire thumb metacarpal. So you have to bring this over. Similarly, when you have a Rolando fracture, you often have a Bennett component and another component, which makes, this, uh, makes two fragments, one here, one here, one, two, and then the shaft is three. So one, two, three. So that's when we're talking about that. That's what we're referring to. So what's nice about this implant is it allows you fixation in a lot of different ways. And typically, it's applied, obviously, it's not to scale, uh, applied uh, along the side of the metacarpal and it allows you to capture the undersurface of the, the thumb metacarpal at the insertion side of the APL. So this is meant to, to capture that. And, and although it looks like it's going underneath uh, into the, uh, the, the joint, the, the CMC joint, the carpal metacarpal joint, or the, uh, the trapezium metacarpal joint, there's a, the lip of it, the dorsal part of the thumb metacarpal, typically is extra articular. So you're actually able to do that. And you have these flanges on both sides that allow you to get multiple screws into that medial side, that, that Bennett fracture, which is actually a very hard fracture to capture and to stabilize. And the other part that makes it hard is one, it's small. Two, it's again, intra-articular. So you, you're not able to put in bicortical screws. So all that makes it very, very challenging in terms of uh, fixing this fragment. So it's actually a very challenging fracture uh, to deal with. So I'm just to give you guys a little bit of orientation on this. This is the dorsum of the thumb metacarpal. This, is a, this cadaver is actually thin, so it's helpful. Metacarpal head, metacarpal base uh, right here. So there's two ways you can expose it. You can do a straight dorsal approach, right? Uh, it's called the dorsal approach. Or you can do what's called the volar approach, and the volar approach is also known as the Wagner approach. The Wagner approach is a true internervous interval, which is between the thenar muscles, uh, which is innervated by the median nerve, and your APL tendon and your EPB tendon, uh, which is radial nerve innervated. Uh, some people like that because it gives you better soft tissue coverage over the plate. Also, you don't have to dissect out the radial artery uh, and you don't have to deal with the radial nerves as much, but your kind of exposure is to the side versus straight dorsal, which is a more direct exposure. But again, you have to find radial artery, your radial sensory nerve branch is right in your field, and you're limited by your, your two tendons, uh, your uh, EPL tendon, and your EPB uh, tendon, which is here. So EPB travels here, EPL travels there, radial artery travels right there, radial sensory nerves travel up like that. So there's a lot of things in your field uh, when you're doing this that you have to be mindful of. I'm gonna go with straight dorsal because I think it'll be easier for the sake of this, uh, this, uh, this dissection to see what's going on. So we're gonna go pretty big incision here. And this is the same incision that people use when they do uh, thumb CMC uh, arthroplasty. Not quite this big, probably half this size. Uh, but again, I think for what we're trying to do. All right, so if you look here, you will now start to see there's typically two branches, and you'll see both of them. Here's your one radial sensory nerve branch right here. Okay, we're gonna bring that over this way. And we have another radial sensory nerve branch 
over here as well. The purple is making it harder to appreciate. It's running. Here's your other real sensory nerve branch over here. So we know where those two are now. And here are two tendons I was referring to. This is your EPB, extensor pollicis brevis tendon. This is your EPL, your extensor pollicis longus tendon. The EPB ends in the extensor hood of the MP joint of the thumb. The EPL goes all the way dorsum uh, to, the, to the IP joint uh, of the thumb. Okay, so now we're going to expose the thumb in a carpal. This is, now this is easy. These go right down the middle. And you're going to go into the CMC joint. Now, we don't really have to go all the way into the joint of the CMC. Uh, when I say CMC, I mean carpal metacarpal joint. Also known as the, T the TMC, the trapezium metacarpal joint. Some people just call it the thumb basal joint. Whatever you like to call it, it's fine. I'm going to try to elevate this as best I can, set periosteally. You can do this with a knife or you can do this with an elevator, as you wish. Now the reduction for this is, is challenging. And once you have it reduced, the way you have it reduced is basically longitudinal traction on the thumb, followed by um, pinning of the, uh, the joint. So again, I, my fracture is medial, so I can pull longitudinal, and right here, this is the base right there. I can put one or two K wires, and as I'm doing this, someone's pulling traction and pushing in the thumb, and one person is driving in these two pieces like this. And at this angle, the other beauty of that angle is once I apply my plate, um, it's, it's not, the, the pins are not going to block my plate application. Okay? If I need to, and if I'm struggling, uh, to get that reduction, then I can actually do one of two things. I can raise my, uh, my exposure and my dissection volarly, so I can go in this direction here, and I can keep exposing the, uh, the thumb metacarpal, and enter the CMC joint on this side. And I'm actually in the joint now the CMC joint. So, and then I can actually see the, the fractures typically right here, I don't know how well you're able to see it. And I can then put a tenaculum in there and then reduce that, this tine inside in here and reduce it like this. And then again, once I do that again, um, I can apply my tine into the other side and to here. Once it's reduced, I can then again have my system place a wire here or here to hold that reduce if I have trouble getting reduced uh, the, the, the primary way. Okay? All right. Come on out. Thank you. So let's say we have the fracture reduced. We're happy with it. Then we apply this plate. Um, and this is really meant to kind of neutralize it. Again, as mentioned, these tines are extra articular. Um, so you want to place it right kind of at the base like so. I put it in this sliding hole first so that I have the option to bring it proximal distal. And again, this is predicated on I've got my fracture reduced, and I'm just going to neutralize it now. So I'm measuring a uh, 14 and a half. So I'll take a 15, please. Two, three screw. Basically, I'm trying to go just hugging below that thumb metacarpal, and it's going to be extra articular. And if you notice, I put in the slided hole, and then when I was doing my final tightening, I was actually driving this as distal as I can um, in terms of capturing that, because the Rolando piece, if it's a pure Rolando fracture, is going to be right here. So this is you're capturing that right there. So you're actually, it's going to be in this part right here. Again, I'm going to show you my picture for a second. I'm going to go up to here like so. And again, that plate is now being applied here, like so, right? So the hook is actually ca catching the Rolando piece. And then your two, there's two of these, obviously, one on each side, um, is then capturing. Um, either you can drive it a little bit uh, posteriorly, 
or anteriorly as needed to kind of capture the piece that you need to. So again, going to here, I then have a little bit of play in terms of the angle of these pieces where I want to, I can go here, I can drop my hand a little bit this way or this way to, to catch the pieces that I want to catch. I'm capturing the base of the uh, metacarpal and again, our true Lander fracture, this is, that's, this is what's evulsed off. So I'm capturing that piece and these allow me to capture the Bennett side of things. So I'm first making sure that the nerve is not in my way. I've got the shaft, I've got the, the fracture provisionally fixed. I've got the hook along, along the Rolando fracture. I've got a K-wire here. I've got a K-wire here. Use your imagination holding the fracture. I've got my plate applied where I want it to be. So now I'm gonna try to internally fix that. So based on my x-rays, I need to go just a little distal as I put these in. And with the VA, with the VA, I think I should be okay with the VA, I'm able to do that, which is nice. And these are going to be unicortical because I have a joint on the other side. I'll take a and I can't stress enough when you're doing this that uh, you're being mindful of the radial sensory nerve the whole time. It is, does take just a moment to, to tangle up the nerve and the tendons here. So you, retract, you have to be very careful and you have to um, make sure that your systems are retracting it, uh, both in the drilling aspect as well as the screw application aspect. Okay, let's take a look at it for a second. You, you can appreciate how I tried to angle my screws distal as much as possible um, in terms of capturing uh, the shaft and the proximal fragment while not entering the, the, the joint. Perhaps could have gone a little bit longer if necessary, but the position of the screw is good and the position of the plate is good. Um, and you can appreciate on this view as well, dorsally, how we're around the entire thumb metacarpal. We are extra articular relative to the CMC joint. You have a great view of the CMC joint right there. There's no hardware in that joint whatsoever.